Hi guys, it's a fantastic Swedish summer day, about uh, 28 degrees Celsius here in Sweden. And I'm still in Sweden because uh, there will not be any Camino hikes for me this year due to the coronavirus. And uh, I want to respect the situation in the world, so I have postponed all my ideas and plans for the future. I know the roads are still there when it's time to go back. Until then, I have done a gear video. And I know that uh, when it comes to gears, many people have an opinion about it, but um, I will anyway try to do a video. And I base it on my own experience and uh, about the gear I normally have in my backpack. About the brands in my video, no one has sent me anything. I have bought everything with my own money. So roll that intro, please. Welcome to the Fast Hiker channel. First of all, I want to talk about shoes. I want to show you something. This is not a scientific test, more logic. I take a pencil and draw a line around my foot when I'm sitting down. If I then stand up and move the foot a few times and then put it back again and draw a new line around the foot, you will see what happens. As you can see, the foot have expanded only by my own body weight. And then you probably can understand what happens to the foot during a full day of hiking and with a backpack on your back that gives extra weight. Therefore, when I choose shoes, I buy shoes that are between one and a half to two sizes larger than my foot, so the foot have enough space. I also look at the inside of the shoe. I look for sharp edges if the shoe bends in a way when I walk, and I also look at the quality of the insole. When my experience is that the shoe are more easily worn out at the inside than on the outside. For example, I have walked over 1000 km in these pair of shoes and they were completely untouched on the outside. But at the inside they were worn out and I had to replace the inner sole on three occasions. Let us look at the type of shoes I have experience of. This is a shoe with a very torsionally rigid sole. It's waterproof, have supports for the ankles and it's warm and very heavy. This is a shoe I use in the winter and when I'm in heavy terrain, like in the mountains. This is a shoe that my partner used at the beginning of our hiking life. It is a shoe with a torsionally rigid sole and support for the foot and ankles. The shoe is relatively heavy as it is in Gore-Tex, it's also relatively waterproof and warm. The next shoe is a mix between walking and running shoe. It has low weight and has a shock absorbing sole. The sole is quite soft and if it rains, your feet will get wet. I used this shoe when I was hiking the Camino Norte. It is a Gore-Tex shoe that resists water very well and which gives a good grip. However, the shoe was quite heavy and on sunny days it became very hot on the feet. The sole is also torsionally rigid, which makes it hard against the feet when you're walking on asphalt. The next shoe is new to me. It's also a Gore-Tex shoe that should be waterproof. It is relatively warm, but uh, lighter than the previous shoe. This shoe has a slightly torsionally rigid sole and is also relatively wide. This is a sports shoe, actually for indoor use. I use this when I'm walking short distances without a backpack. It works well on asphalt, but uh, if it's raining, I would not use them. 
The last shoe I have experience of is actually a sandal. I know that many people like to walk in sandals. I have tried to walk in these sandals, but when the foot slipped back and forth, I got new blisters. So it didn't work well for me. Which shoe would I choose if I were to hike a Camino and why? I will remove this shoe immediately. Too heavy and too stiff. Can also give me problems with my front legs. I don't need support for my ankles, so I also remove this shoe. And I also remove the sandals. If I have to bring these, then it is for use after a day of hiking. For example in the hostel or in the village. Of the remaining shoes, I would choose two pairs. The first one would be a shoe for walking on asphalt and paved ground. This shoe should be light and shock absorbing. I would choose the shoe that best suit my foot. I would also choose one shoe for rainy days and then it would be a Gore-Tex shoe with a torsionally rigid sole and with good grip. The good thing about torsionally rigid sole is that you protect your foot against stones with sharp edges. Which shoe should I recommend and why? I cannot recommend a particular brand or type of shoe as it is very individual how the shoes fit feet, what weather you will walk in and on what type of surface train you will walk. What I can recommend you to do is to try out your shoes that fit your feet best. You don't have to buy a certain brand. The material of the shoe, your sock and how you take care of your feet during the hike will be what determines how your feet will feel. The best advice I can give you is to choose shoe. Walk in them before you start your hike and that you also walk wearing your backpack that has the weight that you intend to carry with you. Then you will know how the shoes will work. Finally, I can add that these shoes were excellent to walk in during our entire hike from Porto to Santiago de Compostela, as most of the survey was of asphalt or paved ground. They were not particularly expensive either. Hi guys, I found this spot in the shadow and um, I will share my experience from my equipment with you. Let's look into this. This is my backpack. It's an Osprey Talion 44. It's uh, actually a shell, you can say, with uh, some pockets on. On the right side here I got the rain cover and on the left side I have put a thermometer and a compass. On this side of the backpack, there are some pockets. You have one here that you can also tie it up a bit if you want. You have one also here on the belt. Oh yeah, I have one on the top. And I will turn it around and you will see. And as you see, you have the same on this side. Here and here. You also have this possibility to have a camelback here, if you want. On this side, you have the large pocket and it's very easy to use. As you can see on this side, you can see that the back is a, a bit curved and it follows your back. It's also a pocket here for a camel pack. You can easily change the size of your backpack by doing this. And then you can shoot, change the height of your backpack. It's also a possibility to do a signal in this pipe. Kind of rescue thing. And you also have this strap that uh, where you can connect poles, for example, and want to have them strapped on your backpack for a while. This rain cover is not enough if you have heavy rain. 
it covers the whole backpack but when you place the backpack on the ground the wet will come up from the bottom and into your gear that's why i use waterproof bags inside the backpack and it's also very easy to find things and it's easy to unpack so let's start unpacking the backpack in the top pocket i have my rain gear I choose to wear a rain jacket and rain trousers instead of a rain poncho. And I do this because my principle to wear clothes is to have different layers to protect me from wind, rain, sun and so on. The first time I walked I used this kind of rainwear, but it was not enough in heavy rain, so therefore I upgrade my rain covers so that resist more water. I can recommend a Gore-Tex rain cover like the one to the left in this picture. On this side I also have a pocket there is where I place my credential, so it's easy to find when I arrived at the uh, alberg. This drop tighten up the opening in the top. After loosening it up, I have here my toilet gear, first aid, and then I have my equipment in this waterproof bag. And as you can see, it's very easy to unpack my bag, even though it's raining. So it's easy to find what you're looking for. Uh, and after unpacking everything, you can see that this uh, it's only a sack, you can see. This is the type of uh, waterproof bags I use. They are very easy, light, not so expensive. Uh, but if you don't want to put money on those, you can use like this that you buy in the supermarket. It's a zip bag. It works very well also. Even if it is not uh, different colors, you can see right through the plastic so you know what's in it. This is 3 liter and this is 8 liter but um, they are also bigger or smaller of these. In my first aid kit I have a protection for sun, I also have a, 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 the medication I need if needed. I also have some plasters and I use Compete but I know others have others opinions. I also have some uh, tape so I can tape my foot if needed, if I sprain it lightly. I have here my toilet gear. Uh, except for my toothbrush, I have a small brush for the hair. I have this laundry soap for clothes. I normally buy this in a supermarket in Spain or France. Clothes pins, four or five. Of those, I have these straps that I can repair things with. A closing stripe that I can close bags or something with. This, if I need to connect something, and also a plug for my ear when you should sleep. Okay, what else do I bring with me? I also have some technical stuff with me when I'm walking. As you can see, I have a GoPro camera, a power bank, and some connections make my backpack heavier, unfortunately. I also bring this uh, wind jacket with me because I like that one. It's my, one of my favorites. I have uh, almost have it in 20 years. And uh, I can say I don't know why I always use it, but uh, it's not Gore-Tex. It's kind of Windstop soft shell and uh, it's not heavy 
give uh, good protection from uh, light rain and uh, from heavy winds and it keeps it warm actually so that's why I'm using it I also bring this lightweight vest it's actually running vest and I use it to get a bit warmer on the chilly mornings it's very very light and it protects me from wind and uh, I think it's a very easy way to get warmer also good when you are in the alberg because when you have walked for a while you maybe start freezing even if it's warm outside it's happened to me when I lost 10 kilo walking this 1600 kilometers long walk I was very frozen in the evening even if the temperature was over 30 degrees of course I bring socks with me and then normally they are in merino wool and why is wool so good they dry very fast and if they don't have a heel like this one you can turn the socks around if you get get a hole here so and I normally use two pair of two pair of socks at the same time because one lighter and one heavier so I get the friction between the socks instead of my feet and the uh, sock that helps me to avoid blisters I have tried to use this kind of sport socks but um, I discovered that it takes very long to get them dry and uh, I get too much friction in my shoes so I get blisters when I use them but if you like them use them okay underwear I use this kind of underwear it's a like a boxer short boxers underwear is in merino and uh, merino wool dry very fast when you have washed them I also bring these large ones uh, with the long legs because I use them if I start freezing in the evening you don't need them if you're walking in July and August that's my experience and why I'm using this size is because um, I don't want to have some edges or it should not be so tight on my body because then it's you can, I don't know the English word really but it scrapes us like uh, on the skin so you, the skin will be red like that and when I'm using this type it uh, I can avoid that Okay, it's a bit more expensive type of underwear, but um, I think it's worth it. I use this kind of trousers where you can uh, strip off the legs so it will be shorter. I also have some shorts with me sometimes because I like to walk in that. Um, but uh, this kind of lightweight trousers is very nice to use. I also use this uh, kind of shirt. It's a merino wool shirt. A bit ex more expensive, but I used this uh, during all my hikes since 2017. And as you see, uh, it's still in good conditions. And it's also easy to wash and it dries very fast. I have at least two of those with me when I'm walking. In the evenings and when I am at the alberg or in the villages, I use this kind of clothes. It's more, it's not a kind of walking clothes actually, but it feels very good to leave the walking clothes behind for, for a while and use another type of material on the body and I feel that I take rest actually so that's why I'm using this okay let's talk about sleeping bag this is a lightweight sleeping bag and I bring that because I feel it's uh, very nice when you crawl down into your sleeping bag at the end of the walking day I also know that people use this kind of silk 
sleeping bags but I don't think that's enough. Uh, you can use it inside the other bag if you want. Then you get the higher temperature. Uh, if you're walking in the July and August, you say, okay, it's very warm then. But uh, my experience is that uh, in the uh, Alberg, it's not so warm always. And sometimes when you have lost some weight, you start to freeze when you have been under the sun a whole day. So, with my experience, I choose to have a sleeping bag. Okay, what more do I bring? I have a head cover. It looks like this. You can um, take off the back. It's a good, lightweight. And it's enough to get protection from the sun. Especially in the neck. I also bring this. This is a small towel. And uh, this is a larger towel. It's in a material that dries very quickly and it works very well. The blue one over here is actually a silk cover for a pillow. I use it because uh, normally I can't find a pillow or something, so I put my clothes inside and then I have a pillow. Very lightweight. Okay, the last thing, and this is uh, actually for my passport and the money. I bring bring it around my body and under my clothes so no one sees it and it's very light but very good. I sometimes also sleep with this so I have my things that very, is very important for me always with me even when I shower in the Alberg. I can recommend this. Normally I have uh, some money in the pocket, so people cannot see that I have more money on me when I am in the shops and like that. And then I have my reserve in this. That was all for this time. Thanks for watching and until next time, take care. And please subscribe to the channel for more videos. See you soon.